Welcome to another installment of LebanonSportsBuzz.com presents. Today we're, we're here with Mike Gross. Mike is an assistant sports editor with uh, <laughs> Lancaster Newspapers and also a Lebanon County native. Uh, one of Mike's, Mike's duties is to cover Penn State. Mike, uh, how long have you been covering Penn State football for the newspapers? Since uh, 2000. I think, I think since 2000. Full time since 05, since the 05 season. Full time meaning going to all the away games. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Hey, uh, this this is probably an understatement, but this has been certainly the most unique season in Penn State football history. I mean, would you that is would you agree with that? With is an understatement. That is a long history. <laughs> it's you know, well, well over a century. Yeah, it's it's uh, you know I think the most fun season was probably that 05 season when they went to the Orange Bowl with the Michael right, Robinson right. team, and it really was a watershed year for the program. But this one has been. Uh, the most memorable for obviously for reasons other than just the football games and, and we all know what those are. Right. Like when you when you first heard about the Jerry Sandusky scandal, um, do you remember how you learned it and, and just your, your your initial reaction when you heard about it? Well, uh, the first time that I heard about that there might be some issue with with Jerry Sandusky was a couple years ago actually. I oh, okay. I was talking to. Uh, some of my buddies on the at one of the road games, we were just driving, going from the restaurant or going to or something like that, and, and and they told me that there was some kind of a deal where Sandusky was being investigated for. Okay. Uh, you know what? And 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 uh, I, I I really actually regret uh, not pursuing it more after that. I mean, you hear there's going to be an attorney general, there's going to be a grand jury, mm -hmm. well, nobody's going to talk, and it's going to be impossible to do any reporting on it, so I sort of just filed it away, but didn't do much, and uh, I wish I would have. Well, and, and that was probably true of, of, of many reporters, oh, yeah. because there is, a, there is a good number of reporters that cover Penn State football. No doubt, and, and it's one of the biggest, the biggest in the Big Ten, it's the biggest media crew in the Big Ten, probably one of the biggest in the country, supposedly. Um, but, you know, this this reporter for the Patriot News, Sarah Gannon, who was a, uh, a crime reporter, and she kind of stumbled onto it because the grand jury was was uh, uh, kind of on her beat, and she ended up, uh, I think, largely getting hired by the Patriot because of this story. Oh, okay. It's pretty cool, and she's just a young, uh, I think like 24 years old, something like that, and uh, she might be getting a pool of surprise. Wow. Wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me. Wow, that, that, that's really cool. Done. Hey, do, 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 you have, Mike, do you have a feel for how much Joe Paterno knew about the, about the whole thing? I mean, do you have any idea how much he knew about it? Uh, I, I think, I, I don't really, but I think that he had to have known something, and I think it's almost, some of these things, it's almost more of an indictment of him if he didn't know about it than if he did, right. or as much of an indictment. Uh, I mean, I, I don't see how he could not have known about the, ni the 1998 thing. Uh, which led to, which I think led to his retirement, and they they incredibly gave him this sweetheart deal where he's an emeritus faculty member with an office and a, and a parking spot and an internet internet account, etc., mm -hmm. and access to the football building and access to the locker room, and and that led to what happened in 2002. It's hard for me to believe that at some level that Joe uh, couldn't have said, um, you know, you, you got it. Whether we can prosecute you or not. Whether this is public or not, you you, you get away from here. Get, right, get, right. get away from my little kingdom here, which which you know everybody says that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, given 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 the whole Sandusky thing, and, and Joe certainly knew something about it. Was was his dismissal? Was it justified? I think it was justified. I don't think they did it. I, I thought they did it in a way that was a little unfair to him. Uh, I, I think doing it that Wednesday night, uh, you know, after he announced his resignation, I think. Maybe they could have quietly gone to him and said, you know, let's let's uh, we'll, we'll, we'll let you say that you resign and, and and maybe even let him maybe even let him coach the Nebraska, the Nebraska game uh, that, that week. Uh, instead, I think I think the way they handled it kind of incited a riot to some extent. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, even if they even if they announce it the next morning, you know, I, I think that would have really exacerbated. I mean, not exactly the opposite of exacerbated the the. Uh, the, the stuff that went on that night, the, the near rioting that went on in State College. So I, I don't think they handled it very well, and I think they handled it in a way that was a little bit, a little bit unfair. Right. 
it, it, it goes without saying too that Joe's legacy, his, his, his legend has been tarnished, right? No, I, I don't think there's any question about it. I don't think there's any way around it. And when, when, you, when you hear Joe himself say, I, I, I wish I had done more, which he did, which he famously was going to say, um, I, I mean, I, I think there's some level of culpability there that's pretty much undeniable. And how do you let it happen? How do you let that happen? Yeah. You know, I, I think one of the things that's lost on this whole thing is Penn State's had a pretty good year on the football field this yes. year, right? They have. I think so, too. I think, uh, uh, you know, I, I've heard some people say that, uh, well, they went 9-3, and three, they beat everybody they should have beat. I, I, I think that's, it sort of looks like that in retrospect right now, but I know, for example, the Iowa game. I know the vast majority of the guys in the beat picked Iowa to win that game. I, I didn't. I, I was in the minority. Uh, I, I think kind of the same thing is true with Illinois to some extent. Uh, um, look at look at the Alabama. They, they gave only LSU gave Alabama a better game than Penn State did, you know. And, and I think I think Wisconsin was one of the best ten teams in the country too, to be honest with you. Maybe even best half dozen teams in the country. So so uh, their losses were pretty high quality losses. They might have been able to win the Nebraska game under different circumstances. Right. That was right. uh, that, that was just insane circumstances in which that game was played. So yeah, I think the bottom line is and with with awful quarterback play. Yeah. We know how we know how quarterback driven football is and especially college football is right now. And uh, so so yeah, I think they did good. I think they did good. Like what what does the future hold for the Penn State football program given this whole thing with, with Sandusky and how much has their recruiting been, been been hurt for years to come? Well, there's there's no doubt in the short term their recruiting's been hurt. They had at least three uh, verbal commitments that have backed off of that, and one of those signed with Penn State with uh, Ohio State. Uh, the other two have just kind of reopened their recruiting. Um, I think that's why I think that's one of the reasons why it's pretty important that as soon as this bowl game gets over, early January, they got to hire a new coach, and, and I think they will hire a new coach. Uh, so that you can go through that, at least have a three-week period there where you can recruit before that early February, you know, national signing date. Um, and and I, I think it's, it's got to have an impact. I think if you were a high school senior uh, being recruited to play college football and you don't know who the head coach is going to be, you don't know who your position coach is going to be if you choose Penn State. Under those circumstances, if you've got options, are you going to choose Penn State? I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is there someone you would like to see or some a, a name? out there for, for head coach. I, who, I wrote about this on uh, for Sunday's paper. I, uh, Gary Patterson of TCU. I, I think he's I think he's uh, uh, the last five or six years. I think he's been the best college football coach in the country. He's been incredibly successful, and it's not just on the field, although it's spectacularly so on the field. Academic performance has been outstanding uh, at a school that you don't think of. At TCU, you don't think of that at Stanford. You know, uh, academic performance is outstanding. NCAA issues. There are none. Off the field issues, there are none. I don't really see a weakness with Gary Patterson. Uh, everybody else that you, that you throw out there, I can see a, well, he's not plausible, or there's no way he'd come here, or or a weakness. I don't really see a weakness with Gary Patterson. So I was pretty, I, I, I really pretty strongly said that I, I, I would like to see him uh, considered. Uh, you don't hear any you don't hear any reports that he is being considered, that they're talking to him. Um, I wish they would. I wish they would. Mike, listen, thanks. I, I appreciate your time and your comments, and um, just keep up the good work. I'll do what I can. <laughs> Thank you.